Hey, uh, it is Monday, February 7th here in the ONTV studio. I'm Ian Locke, Executive Director at Ori Neighborhood Television for the 12th Annual ONTV Food Drive. With me in the studio today, for the next 30 minutes or so, Matt Pfeiffer, owner of Northern Wholesale Flooring and all-around awesome guy and supporter of Fish oh, and ONTV. And uh, you and I are going to have a, an interesting uh, little chat with a special guest. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm super excited to introduce him. Uh, most most people probably already know him, but not enough. He's someone that uh, everybody should know. He's uh, he's been through an amazing, tough couple of months um, in leading uh, in uh, leading through. Uh, some challenges yes. in the local communities. We won't get into who. Yep. Um, and uh, so I wanted him here because uh, this this benefits our whole area, and we want to get the more people we get involved, the more needs we can fill with it, your help. It absolutely does. And with a food drive, like we said, this is our 12th annual, which is hard to believe. Crazy. It's 12 years already. And our food drive this year is a hybrid again, where we are collecting food. Uh, uh, physical items, you can stop by the studio at 1349 Joslin Road and drop off your food donations. We're trying to fill the ONTV van, uh, which is a large van, a big truck. You can't miss it. The graphics all over it. Uh, we're going to hopefully have pictures of it so you can see a uh, handheld camera outside. A little, this is live TV. We can walk right? out we, there, right? We possibly go out if the camera's working. We ran into <laughs> a little technical problems just before we went live. But yeah, you can drop off physical donations or you can donate via GoFundMe at our website at orionontv.org. And uh, that, that vehicle works really well. It helped us last year when we did uh, our virtual food drive for our 11th annual. And t this year we're getting closer to getting back to absolute normal uh, as this pandemic kind of kind of Wait, gets, are you calling uh, it I'm over? I'm not calling it over, but I'm saying it's kind of... You know, we're kind of seeing maybe the rays of light of normalcy back for us. But, but what we're trying to do also, and regardless of pandemic or no, the fish food pantry needs your help. And we're here to try to help stock those shelves, right? So why are we here uh, and why do we have this food drive at this time of year? We have, it, uh, we have it because at the end of the holidays, the shelves can get, be picked over with all the different uh, donations they give out. But how can you donate? You can donate today by going online, like I mentioned earlier, at orionontv.org. Just click on that Food Drive uh, logo, and it'll take you right to the GoFundMe page. There you can see all of our wonderful sponsors we have and you can donate uh, with your credit card and do it uh, rather quickly. Uh, you can also donate in person, like I mentioned as well. Bring your non-perishable items to the studio at 1349 Joslin Road here at the Orion Center, or, uh, and you can drop them off in our van. But you can, you can also drop off your cash donations in person, person if you'd like, because you know when you donate online, there's always a fee that's taken out, um, you know, a little bit less uh, for the charity in need. So if you want to avoid those fees, come on down and you can donate in person. But you can see there's a big old white truck. You see it driving around Lake Orion all the time, going to football games, hockey games, graduations, all that good stuff. We're trying to fill that big, big old white van up with food. So what are we looking for? Here's a little wish list. And it changes season to season of what fish needs to uh, have for its clients. And really what we're looking for this time of year, real hearty foods. Uh, Chilies, beefs and stews, uh, hamburger or helpers, great. Those little meal prep uh, mixes are always uh, very helpful. Ketchup and mustard, you'd think, really? And condiments? Everybody likes their ketchup and mustard. It helps the veggies go down, <laughs> right? Oh, I know you, don't really? you, don't you're you have ke ketchup? You're putting ketchup and mustard on your veggies? Hey. You and I need to talk. I'm a pretty good cook, <laughs> and I don't want you putting ketchup or veggies on your uh, yeah. veggies. Hey, get creative, right? Uh, but also canned pineapple, canned fruits this time of year, you know? you're. Get your remembering spring times just around the corner. So pine canned pineapples, mandarin oranges, and all that good stuff. Peaches as well, right? So those are some of the things that the uh, food pantry is looking for um, this time of year. But again, uh, the food pantry can't succeed without your help. We do have collection goals, uh, and we're on our way with all of our sponsors. Um, if uh, Joey, should we do some of our sponsors? We ready? I got that one. Okay, let's uh, call attention to some of our sponsors here uh, for today. We have uh, specific sponsors each of our uh, live uh, telethon days this week, and uh, here they are. All of us at ONTV would like to thank our corporate sponsors for their generous donations. We are also thankful for their participation this year. 
Meyer of Auburn Hills is a five-day sponsor with a $900 donation. Our neighbor just down the road, Old World Canterbury Village, donated $1,000 and is also a five-day sponsor. Aldi is back as a one-day sponsor once again this year. M3 Investments donated $500 toward our final goal and is a five-day sponsor. Shirley's Wig Shop and Waste Management joined this year as a two-day sponsor. Thank you again to all of our sponsors. Meyer of Auburn Hills has been a huge supporter of the ONTV Food Drive for many years. Let's take a look at this video about Meyer and why helping fish is so important. Part of the, the Meyer culture is that we continue to give back to the communities and customers that shop with us. Uh, we're in a fortunate spot where we can give back to our communities and 2020 was a tough year for our customers and a lot of organizations out there and part of our goal is to try to give back and help those customers out that shop with us in the communities that we have our stores in. Well, customers are, are important to us, you know, without our customers, Meyer would be nothing. Uh, we're all here because of our customers and, and we understand that and we see what our customers are going through with uh, the pandemic and our goal is to, to help them out. You know, they've been here for us for all these years and now it's our turn to, to be there for them. How has the pandemic affected Meyer? Uh, it's been a struggle. You know, our team members, uh, the leadership, uh, our customers, uh, we've had a lot of changes over the last uh, 10 months. Uh, sometimes we change things by the hour, sometimes by the day, by the week. Uh, we've had, you know, numerous items that were hard to come by. We went through that, that time frame where you couldn't find toilet paper, you couldn't find ramen noodles, water, uh, some of those items. And we know our, our customers rely on us to get those items into their households. So. Uh, it was difficult because at times uh, it was almost like uh, Christmas, Christmas week, every week for eight straight months. And uh, our team members really worked hard to try to keep the shelves full and uh, take care of our customers the best that we can. Uh, it's, it's been busy, it's been hectic, and we've had to uh, adapt to the change and uh, try to figure out what our customers need and do our best as a company to, to take care of those customers' needs. During this whole pandemic, uh, our number one priority during this whole thing was keep our safety uh, top priority for both our customers and for, for our team members. Uh, you know, there's been a lot uh, of concern. Uh, so Meyer actually has done a great job of putting uh, different uh, safety precautions in place. Uh, starting with our team members, uh, we start with health screens before our team members even punch in and uh, start their job. Uh, we've added uh, plexiglass throughout the store to keep the uh, registers uh, separating the, the cashiers as well as the team members. Uh, we've added uh, hand sanitizer stations uh, throughout the store uh, for our team members, for our customers, uh, social distancing stickers. Uh, we try our best to, to keep uh, everybody six feet apart. It can be challenging at times, but uh, we, we've implemented that uh, face mask. Uh, we've really tried to enforce face mask with both our, our team members and our customers, uh, again, to keep everybody safe. Uh, there's been a lot out there. Uh, you know, I could probably go on and on of uh, some different things, but safety, safety has been our top priority as a company. Hopefully the end is near. You know, I know 2020, I'm sure everybody's excited for 2020 to end, uh, including ourselves. Uh, and we just want to stay positive. We know uh, if we stick together as a community, uh, we can get through this together. Uh, we want to, to be there for everybody. And if there's anything we can do to help out, uh, let us know. But uh, it's important to us to give back and stay positive. It's almost over and we're going to get through it. And back here in the studio, we can't thank our sponsors enough for all they do for this food drive and have done for the food drive over the last 12 years. Without them, uh, we would really have a hard time meeting those goals every year. So uh, we're back in the studio. We thanked our sponsors. Way to go, sponsors. But here's one of our sponsors, Matt Pfeiffer from Northern Wholesale Flooring, in the studio with us, as we mentioned at the top of the hour. He's with us to talk about 
fish. We're here to talk about giving in mm -hmm. Orion Township. All the different things going on. You know, the food drive is just one little spoke in a big old cog. Yeah. Yep. And you are a part of several others, like Real Men of Orion and a variety of others. Do you want to go into some of the... The, the options if people want to give not just to fish but to yeah. other op, uh, opportunities around town and you are kind of the face i want to say the face but the name to go to going hey we got something going on he yeah goes, you can probably uh, do better with he goes, faces, <laughs> better face out there i'd use you go stand back uh, you know because you've been very very busy yeah it's been a it's been a busy uh, few months and um you know needs always arise and there's there's always going to be the next need we don't know I, I'm always wondering what's about to change my life again because yeah. something is going to pop up and we're going to jump in and we're going to help. But, um, you know, the, the, the food needs in our area surprise a lot of people. And I think this is really important, not only because of the actual money raised to buy food. Yeah. And I think it's important for those to know that, you know, there's probably some people hopefully watching this and we're going to do uh, um, all week. You're going to see uh, activity here. But when you donate money, uh, that money buys, every dollar buys about three pounds of food. Yep. And if you think about, you know, going into your pantry, which is really appreciated, and I know you guys didn't ask me to do this part, but it's important. We don't want to donate food that's uh, expired yes. or food that you wouldn't eat. Um, we want to donate uh, food that is of uh, good actually quality. help people. Yeah, to help people. And, yep. and, uh, and really, when people donate expired or damaged food, what they're doing is they're actually making um, our job on this end and the, the, the pantry's job harder. So um, the best way to help and the easiest way, quite frankly, is to jump on the GoFundMe or to stop by and drop off some cash. And yeah. you guys, uh, you know, you, a lot of you know me out there. You can come come to me. We're collecting as well at, uh, at my store at Northern Wholesale Flooring yep. and uh, Floor Trader Outlet. But we also, you can just come. You see me in town. You want to donate and you don't want to drive out to ONT, you get it to me yeah. and I'm going to put it in Ian's hands. And we're going to have a couple of donations. And he's there. not kidding. That happens throughout the year. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we are a year-round drop-off location as well. So yeah, yeah, we want to help yeah, we're, We want to help in all needs. But yeah. what? so today's <laughs> Monday. What happens every Monday in our town that some of you know, some of you don't, yeah. is, um, and this is unrelated to, to the Oxford uh, Orion uh, fish, uh, but we, uh, we have a food truck. We work with Forgotten Harvest and Woodside Bible and Orion Township. Yep right across the street um, at Canterbury or Woodside uh, Bible. And, uh, and we, we feed people every week. And so we've done this since the pandemic started. And I can tell you that the need is great yeah. in our area. There are people that line up. In fact, last week was the biggest um, uh, amount of uh, families we fed in probably four or five months. Wow. So things aren't getting, um, they aren't getting less. That uh, They're less than the, the, when the pandemic first started, we we're feeding five to 600 families a week. Yeah. Five to 600 families a week. And it's a it's a huge production. We have a semi show up. We have volunteers that come out. The organization, day. the number of people. It's unreal. The number of volunteers, you can't really appreciate it unless you see We it. don't always have enough. So if you are looking for some volunteer opportunities <laughs> well, for a go. Monday morning, it's a great way to yeah. start your week. I love it. And our volunteers love it. Um, and, uh, and nothing goes to waste. All right. So if, if all the families are uh, get their uh, yeah. you know allotment or whatever it is, uh, what they need, the food then, if there's any left over, it does go someplace to help yeah, others. Yeah, multiple places. So we have, we have a couple of different efforts that follow that. And, and again, I wanted to highlight what we're doing on Mondays because what we're doing today is so important. There are there, A lot of people don't realize that we have people that are food challenged in our yeah. community, and we do constantly. Um, the need has always been here. Yes, Oakland County is a wealthy community, yes. um, but any like any area of wealth, there's also people without wealth. And, uh, and those folks are trying to feed their family just like the rest of us yep. and so we can help them so what what we do on Mondays demonstrates is the the true need that exists throughout the area and people come yep. from not only Oxford and Orient even surrounding areas for that food and so um, we had uh, today we had probably about 240 to 260 families uh, that we fed so and that's yeah. that's about where we're running average last week we were closer to 300 mm. um, that's every week yeah. Those those needs happen, and when and you were, you asked what happened to the food that we don't if there's yeah, not enough it, people. Yeah, um, Woodside also has a uh, pantry, so um, we actually uh, built out a pantry. They they are incredibly good uh, partners over there uh, with the township, and so now there's a pantry there as right well. Right on site. Yep, right on site, and so when there's extra food, we shift it to the pantry, and if it's um, if it's um, 
foods that can go bad. Uh, um, perishables. Perishables, yeah. thank you. That's the term I'm looking for. <laughs> I've been doing this a while. We actually bring them here to the Orient Center because yep. uh, they also do senior programs out of the Orient Center. So we need food for that. Um, the food does not go to waste. Uh, if uh, and uh, and unfortunately, there are a lot of weeks, and these are the these are the hardest weeks for us as volunteers. Yeah, there's a lot of weeks where we run out of food, where we don't. There's people still in line, and we are down to well, we can give you you know here's a box yeah. of cereal, and you know you can go down to the pantry and get some overflow. And so, that's why the other pantries are so important, right? Yes. You have the one at uh, Woodside Bible Church, and then fish. Oxford Orient Fish, which is right. why we're here today, right? And, right, and we talk about food emergencies. If you're in a food emergency, I think Joey, our director, we have a graphic that can help you. We've got a phone number you can call. Fish is the place to reach out to. Yep. Um, once you get the phone number, uh, you go to their website at OxfordOrientFish.org. And they have all that information. You can see if you're in a food emergency on the graphic on your screen, you can call 248-628-3933, and you can get the process started. Um, 99 families they help, you know, hundreds a week, and it's in, of individuals a week, uh, fish helps. And if you are in an emergency, you can reach out to them directly. Uh, but then again, we also have on Mondays, like uh, Matt was saying, if you need to come out and uh, get in line and, uh, Forgotten Harvest is there, a fantastic organization, and all the volunteers they have. There's so many people behind the scenes helping those in need around our community. We're, we're talking food pantries and food emergencies yep. today and all week, but there's, you know, there's other needs that go on and other uh, fundraisers that happen. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you laugh, but it, 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 you, that you're involved with, uh, the, the Real Man of Orion, you know, that sort of thing, uh, for cancer uh, donations. The, yep. Oxford Strong, everybody watching knows what that is and uh, with what's happening north of us and well, supporting Oxford, Oxford and all that, you know, that community. Yeah, there's, so, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to actually end up going live while we're here because I want to try and, so when, yeah. we, when we do live videos yeah. and stuff, the goal is to broaden the reach, right? Yeah. So for those of you watching, if you share this, that helps to broaden the reach to your friends that might not be following ONTV. I don't know why they wouldn't because, I mean, <laughs> great people. Hyper local programming, yeah, yeah. right? So, no filters. Um, so I'm, I'm actually going to go live while we're doing this on Facebook yes. because, and then for those of you who might click onto Facebook, <laughs> that's you guys, um, share it. We get the word out, we spread the word wider, and that really helps. Um, it helps and I a need lot. to share a story with what happened last year, right? We, the donations we were collecting last year for the food drive, um, they were coming in, you know, pretty steady during the week, and then it kind of tapered off near the end of the week. And uh, Matt rolls in and he goes, hey, I understand you're, you still haven't reached your goal yet. And he goes, well, can I help? And we're like, absolutely, because I'm going to go live here I'm gonna, on Facebook. And he proceeded to roll, what was it, an hour? Just under an hour? Yeah, you know, I can talk a little bit, <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, understatement of the century, but he was fantastic rolling around, doing what he does and on Facebook. And, and we saw that, and instantly we saw action on the donations. Well, and so he, we brought him back. We called him the closer last year because he closed <laughs> out that food drive, and, uh, you know, talking to people, getting them hyped up, and spreading the word, and he's going to do that again. So today, we're going to see him today. He's going to roll around on Facebook, do the same thing again to kind of get us going, get us charged, and then we're going to see, he's going to be back in the studio again Friday, right, in the morning, just like this. Yep, we're going uh, to have a special guest us. on Friday, too, uh, kind of a big deal. Uh, we're bringing out on Friday, we're bringing out the big guns. You know? Yes, absolutely, and we want to finish strong, especially on our live segments from 12 to 2. Um, absolutely. And what are we at, uh, 20 after? So uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? You know, uh, like we said, this is the food drive. It is for fish, but there are other uh, groups. Hey, everybody on Facebook, six yeah. people watching. Thank you. We'll get, we'll get more. Donate, donate, donate. There's, um, a, there's the guys behind the scenes. But uh, talk about uh, Northern Wholesale Flooring and the crew and your staff there. You guys collect, you donate. You, you're really community focused. I mean, well, I think I think it's you're um, really out there. I think it's every business's responsibility that uh, derives their income, their their uh, their family's uh, income from a community to be a part of that community in more than just offering the services or business offers, but yeah. to be involved to make a difference. And so uh, we committed uh, back at the beginning. Uh, to uh, be a part of the community, not just uh, benefit from the community, but to make sure that we're here to lead, to help others, um, and to uh, to hopefully encourage our business partners. And that's what I'm doing today. We're looking at all of you out there. If you own a business, we need you to donate. Donate 100 bucks. 
they'll do a little promo for you. If you donate 100 bucks as a business and uh, you donate uh, 500 or 1,000, you'll be a hero. All right? Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and ONTV is here. We always work with uh, our chamber. We work with uh, the DDA and our local businesses. We know the stresses they were under over the course of that pandemic, right? Yeah. Over the pandemic. And we're out there. We are your community TV station trying to help our community any way we can, including our businesses, right? Yep. We came to a uh, seven minutes long. Okay, I'm hearing that uh, as far as time goes, we do have a special guest, right? We don't want to forget. He's, right. he's out in the lobby. No, he's kind of a big deal. He's, I feel bad that I'm making him wait. He's a big deal. We're kind of making him wait a little bit, but that's live television, right? That's how it goes. So what we're going to do is we're going to step away real quick. We're going to see a, a video about fish that Owen TV put together. Um, I'm not sure if it's a history of the food drive history, or just, yes. yes, it's a history, history of the food drive. We love to love a little history. Um, and fish. So we're going to go to the video, and when we come back, we'll be a, hopefully out in the lobby. Everything's working right, live TV. I, you know? Yeah, we're going to run to the lobby now. Then. We're, we're not going to we, sit here for no, seven no, no, minutes. No, no, no. I can't sit still No, we're running to the lobby, and, and we're going to have our special guest in the waiting, um, and maybe a special announcement. I a little bird told me so yeah maybe okay. <laughs> maybe so right. follow on you guys stay with me and uh you guys do what you need to when yeah. we, this is live tv, live TV so and live video it's a very complex <laughs> yeah very it, complex, it's we're, yeah. we're live everywhere today just live, so uh, we're on the website uh, everywhere uh, so okay so we're gonna roll the video uh, enjoy the video learn something about fish and the food drive and we'll be back in a moment ONTV hosted its first food drive to benefit oxford orion fish on february 12 2011. Various bands performed at drop-off locations throughout the area as the food drive went live from the former studio located on the Pier Road. Outreach coordinator Molly Perry was instrumental in getting the food drive off the ground. We would strongly urge everybody to come out and bring their canned goods, all of their, you know, just one or two canned goods would help. In 2012, Owen TV was in the process of moving into its new location at the Orient Center, so the food drive was hosted by Good Shepherd Lutheran Church and School on Baldwin Road. Several local bands and performers entertained visitors in the school's gymnasium throughout the day. Visitors wanting to enjoy the performances could either pay the price of admission or bring canned goods and non-perishable items. Well, Good Shepherd uh, Church and School is an amazing place. The people here really support each other. The church knows we need the school, the school knows we need the church. So working together in something like this for a worthwhile cause and the people are so excited about helping each other out by giving back to the to the, the people that are in need and so that's what makes this place just an outstanding place to work, just an outstanding place to, to be part of this kind of fundraising. In its third year, the Feed Our Fish food drive was held at the Orient Center for the first time. Owen TV hit the air live right at 10 a.m. on Saturday, February 9th, calling the community to action to support those in need. The week leading up to the food drive saw thousands of pounds of food dropped off at our studios. The hard work of Lake Orion High School and Good Shepherd Lutheran School students pushed our pre-show totals close to our goal of 6,000 pounds. As the week wore on, food poured in from our friends in, at MWO Wrestling and the staff at Orion Township. Local businesses worked hard as well as collecting food and donating items for our raffle. The live bands hit stage at 11 a.m. and entertained our visitors until 4 p.m. Our live show was a huge success as well. Staffed by ONTV volunteers and interns, the ONTV food drive was a bigger success than we could have ever imagined. In 2014, the food drive was renamed the Fiverr Five Food Drive, encouraging donors to bring in $5 or five food items for a chance to win raffle prizes donated by local businesses. Visitors were also encouraged to head on over to the Orion Center to enjoy music and magic provided by a wide variety of entertainers. The food collection process actually started weeks before the event. In 2015, the Fiverr Five Food Drive returned to the Orient Center to celebrate its fifth year of collecting food and money for the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. This drive is to help restock the shelves after a busy holiday season. When you donate $5 or five food items, you'll be entered to win some awesome raffle prizes. Definitely, and our many Lake Orion business partners were generous enough to donate close to $2,000 in goods and services for our raffle drawings today. And that raffle will happen right here, live on air at 3.30 p.m. In 2016, new and familiar faces joined forces to make the sixth annual food drive a huge success. Hello, and welcome to the sixth annual ONTV 5 or 5 food drive. 
The live telecast kicked off at 10 a.m. and continued until 4 p.m. Residents were invited to visit the ONTV studio with donations for a chance to win raffle prizes provided by local businesses. Visitors were encouraged to stay and enjoy a wide variety of musical performances throughout the day. Our shelves really, they get filled and then we see them get empty. And, but our communities are just so wonderful because uh, we're, our communities fill our pantries. In 2017, Bria Brown and Kevin McCormick kicked off the six hour live broadcast as a small army of volunteers made the seventh annual food drive a huge success. We're almost overwhelmed with the amount of uh, donations coming in and the people coming in and out. And it was, it was really, really satisfying to see the reaction from uh, Orient residents, uh, the, the other groups that were coming in to perform for us, like LA Dance, they came in huge for us, huge uh, with the amount of uh, donations. The, the Cub Scouts came in and dropped off way more than we ever expected, so it was a bonus. Um, our goal is 5,000 pounds, and we don't have the total numbers in, but it's going to look like we're going to surpass that by a, a nice margin. It, this could potentially be the largest collection we've ever had. In 2018, severe winter weather couldn't prevent the donations from rolling in during the 8th annual Five or Five Food Drive. It's wonderful. We have such a need in our community and the uh, neighbors just supply and help everybody that's in need and it's lovely. Even in the bad weather today, you got a lot of food and everybody will really appreciate it. Unfortunately, heavy snow on Friday and Saturday hampered collection efforts a bit, although people still made an effort to come to the Orient Center with their donations. And in 2019, volunteers, staff, local businesses, and organizations all came together to make the ninth annual food drive the most successful ever. At 10 a.m. sharp, hosts Kylie Barber and Kendall Ashman went live on local cable TV to encourage viewers to drop off non-perishable food items or cash donations for a chance to win raffle items donated by local businesses and members of the community. As the food drive wound down near 4 p.m., Raffle tickets were drawn and winners announced at the end of the day. It was announced that ONTV had exceeded its goal of 6,000 pounds, including a new record of $2,553 in cash donations. And it really picked up around noon, and about one we were elbow to elbow in here, and it was very difficult to walk in the aisles here at ONTV, and we couldn't have been happier. It just came out very, very well. In 2020, ONTV celebrated its 10th year of raising food and money for Oxford Orion Fish. Once again, the community came through as businesses donated cash and raffle prizes and live entertainment was provided throughout the day. Luckily, the food drive was held just before the world came to a screeching halt due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The drive was kind of a whirlwind. Um, the only way we really met the, the, the goal of the 10,000 pounds uh, with the cash donations. The cash donations were a record for us. It was 3,500 plus, um, which equates to just north of 8,000 pounds. Now, in 2021, the world is still reeling from the pandemic, which forces ONTV to make major changes to the food drive. The focus this year will be cash donations, and you're encouraged to visit orionontv.org and click on the donate button to help support Oxford Orient Fish. Now more than ever, the food pantry's role in serving the community is so important to those in need. Can you, uh, you want to jump in and help? And All right, what did back you say? here in the Absolutely. ONTV no, we're lobby we're at ONTV in the 12th annual ONTV Food Drive. Uh, it's amazing how you do live television, you set everything up, and then it all breaks just before you go live on TV. We are actually being seen live here in the studio, wireless, with Mr. Joe Johnson, our, product, or our studio manager's phone, and we're trying to get through this element here. So we are back again. Uh, Fish, the video you just saw, a big history of what's going on. Um, 20, you know, on TV's history with a food drive over 12 years, been good. We got a lot of guests here, so we're gonna we're gonna interrupt you. We've got a Facebook live streaming going on. We got a live TV show going on at the same time. So now we're gonna merge them together. So Tommy, Tommy Diagostino, Tommy, you've got your law firm. What are you representing today? We're representing Lifted Investment LLC, an organization here that has a business operation here in Lake Orion. 
huge community contributors and obviously this is a great cause. We've uh, been involved in a wide variety of things and today we've got a check for $500 for the- uh, Wow, wow, wow. Oh. that is fantastic. That is fantastic. 500 bucks, that's 1,500 uh, pounds of food. Uh, for those Slipped in investments track. here in, in Lake Orion. Very good, and it, this is what we're talking about. You know, the ON TV's here, the volunteers we have here, FISH, all the nonprofits, all our business community comes together, helping those in need, making sure that the food drive and the food pantry is stocked for those who need it. So There's nothing more fantastic. I mean, we had this recent fire here in Lake Orion. Yes. People were displaced, a great need for that. I was involved, we were involved in that. I mean, there's yeah. nothing better than helping those who can't help themselves in these times of needs. And, you know, the economy isn't what it should be for a lot of people, so. Correct. This guy steps up and helps. Every time I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm begging people for money or, or items or whatever, Tommy's always there. And uh, Tommy, what would you say, uh, Tom, I'm sorry, Mr. Diagostino, <laughs> I apologize. We're, we're kind it's of- It's official buddies, now, he's I'm a kind sponsor. Of the short right? name but um why i, 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 tr I try to i try to explain to business owners and and just community members at large why it's so important for for them to jump in and help and these kinds of things and you always do so could you shed some light from your perspective why why do you do what you do to help the community and why should these folks watching out there do the same well you know i come from a small community i grew up in bay city farming community outside of town so I've always been kind of small town oriented. And I lived in a variety of other communities before I ended up here in Lake Orion in 2005. And there's just something about this community, the people in this community, they all pull together for everything that goes on. And they just think it's important, even if it isn't a lot, to give back to the community. There's nothing more you can do to help the people around you. There's nothing more important to do than to help those around you, particularly if you're in a position where you can do that. And every little bit makes a difference. It doesn't have to be a huge donation. Every donation means something because first of all, the actual meaning, you're actually stepping up and trying to make a difference, but also yeah. because it's gonna benefit. And so on that, to follow up, um, when uh, when I talked to Keith uh, at, at Canterbury, he ended up yes. kicking in that grand, which uh, thank you, Keith. Uh, Biggest support, donation in the history of the food. Support right. Canterbury Village. Um, at the same time, another local business owner was inspired. Uh -oh. So I have a little check here from one of our friends in the community. I'm going to give that to All you. All right. We've got another check for 500 bucks hey. from Sagebrush Cantina. Sagebrush Cantina. Uh, Dia, Dia heard what we were doing. He saw what that Keith stepped up, and he said, "I want to I want to help out." 500 bucks right there, that's an awesome donation. So support, one thing that I think is incredibly important, <laughs> and I try to get this message across as often as I can, Fabulous. but I'm gonna try again, gonna try again. The, uh, I know, I'm not sure which camera, we got three of them. Which as, one are we looking at? <laughs> as citizens of our community, support yeah. these businesses. Yes. that you step up. And yeah, I'm telling you, support me too, because I can't do what I do without your help. And without my business being strong, I can't be out doing this. So support the businesses like Canterbury, like Sagebrush, they don't know how to support you, but we'll get into that. Yes. Um, but but it, support the businesses that step up, and yeah. that's going to encourage them to step up more. Absolutely. That's going to make a bigger impact, and our community as, at large will be much stronger because of it. Now, the live streamers uh, were introduced to our guest here, uh, but the people at watching from home did not uh, meet oh. Supervisor Curtis oh. yet hey, from home. Oxford. So we're doing two shows at the same time. We've never done that before. That was brand uh, new. Brand new. So... Multitasking. You're, uh, we're trying yeah. with uh, technical difficulties <laughs> abounding. Certainly. But you're here this morning. Tell the people we're watching on Comcast uh, 10 here or around the planet on our website. I came down Tell to support us. your efforts to uh, get food for the Oxford Orient, Orient Fish. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was Excellent. telling Matt earlier, <laughs> you know, with their new facilities uh, opened up in 2018, uh, it, it's it's a remarkable place. It's in the open. People can find it easily yeah. rather than going down the old dirt roads into, yes. into Thomas. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, you know, 2021, they serviced over uh, 2,500 individuals that represented about 1,100 resident yeah. homes. Uh, they, they delivered over 128,000 pounds of food. So to... Uh, refurbish refill up the shelves yeah. it's uh a lot of little food drives go on with businesses churches every little bit counts yep. and when businesses come in and and donate like this it's uh it takes the load off of a lot of people it really does i was yeah. thinking pressure right pressure uh, all yes. the volunteers that uh, are there at, at the, the pantry that are there all year uh, they are they are working and striving to fill those shelves to help those in need and 
like uh, checks like this just really push them over the top. And, exactly. and with the cash, we were talking about the cash donations in the studio earlier, that it gives them flexibility. Certainly so does. as you know, the seasons come and go, uh, the food pantry has different needs and yes, the, the, the clients have different needs. So this allows them to really react to the needs instantly of what the, the, uh, needs the clients of need. The needs multitude in our, in our communities together, it does feed a lot of people. Well, it's great to have you here in the Owen TV studios. I think for the first time. Is this the first time you've been no, here? No, this is not the Couple first times. time I've been. I've been sneaking around. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm up at the new uh, Orion uh, offices down there taking my picture on Chris's desk and stuff. So oh, yeah. I saw we're, we're that. Very that that good. Yeah, that, that is great. Chris and, and I have a great uh, companionship. To, our community needs help. We both stand up yeah. and uh, provide that help when we can. Yeah. So thank you for coming out. Thank oh, you for welcome. supporting the food drive. And fish. Right, yes. uh, like you said, Oxford and Orion are together, uh, brothers and sisters, brothers in arms, that sort of thing. And uh, we have a sister station up there, OCTV, yes. which uh, we have a great relationship with, and uh, we would love to expand this food drive with them and try to do other programming with them. So we're all together, community-based, and we can't thank you enough for stopping here today. Thank you. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Um, he's still streaming yeah, I'm still on sorry, Facebook. But I'm going to go ahead and wind he's this do one up, and thing. then we'll I'll wind this one up. I wanted, um, so thank yeah, you for coming he's winding out. Up. And then uh, do you guys... <laughs> Here's the check you, official. Do you need, Thank you, sir. Really appreciate it. Am I it. going back in? or? You? So we are still live here. I think I'm going to go to, what time is it? We're going to go to a video. Baking so we, with Best Friends. Uh, baking with Best Friends. So all day today, uh, the theme of the Food Drive programming is cooking. So uh, we have one of my favorite uh, episodes. We shot a number of years ago with some middle school students, Baking with Best Friends. Take a look. I'm Jasmine, and this is my best friend from Weber. Megan. Here are our assistants, Jayla and Annabelle. Today we will be showing you how we use things in, that go on in our daily lives to inspire us to create a theme for our passion of making cupcakes. Here is our first cupcake inspired by Chipper. Chipper is my sister's shoulder buddy, Jayla. And one day my sister decided to have a birthday party for Chipper. So we made cupcakes for them. Okay. Don't forget to wash your hands and put on your apron. First, we are use a normal use a normal um, cake mix, and and um, just follow the instructions. So this cake mix uses one cup of water. One, one third of oil and three eggs. Now, before before you start mixing, you want to turn the oven to three fifty in this case, but in whatever temperature it says on the box. So, it's not the most important part. <laughs> So the first cupcake is going to, to be um, about Chipper, and it's, we're going to try to make it look like him. So right now we are mixing the batter because we need to mix it till it's smooth. You can either use anything you can use like to mix, like a spoon or one of these, or you can use a mixer. So. Um, we are using a strawberry mix, but you can use any mix you would like, so don't really, just go out and buy whatever you want, like, you can use confetti or fe funfetti or, um, just like anything you want, really, so, yeah. And you have to make sure that you're having fun. Annabelle, so can we have an assistant to come mix? Can you please take these? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, 
So, I think I'm good. Okay. okay. So, we're just gonna make sure there's no lumps in the mix. And next we will be. Okay, so. So we have themed cupcake ones. And so this one's going to be, f this is the cupcake wrapper for the first um, set of cupcakes. Which is the chipper cupcakes. Okay. And we are just going to pour them in. So, which is our spoon? Okay, so you're just gonna use a spoon to get like a scoop and then you're gonna take your cupcake thing. And you want to make sure that you in. don't overfill it and you don't underfill it. Because if you overfill it, it will, um, it will, it will like flap over to the side of it. Or if you undercook it, you can barely even see it. So, yeah. <laughs> and then our second cupcake is a graduation cupcake. And we have graduation themed cupcake wrappers. And we are going to decorate them with little toppers and sprinkles. Yeah. Like these. And also for the chipper cupcakes, we will, we will be using food coloring to make the dye, the frosting orange like chipper so we don't have orange food so coloring going so yellow and red and red and for the graduation cupcakes we're making it green and white because where we in Lake Orion we're green and white so, so let's start with the icing we are using cream cheese flavored but you can use whatever flavor you want and just take like two scoops I would advise. So you're gonna take your food coloring. And you okay. only need a little bit of icing. I mean, food <laughs> coloring for your icing. At least cause, three drops. Cause with the icing, if you use, if you use too um, much, it, it gets this weird taste and you don't want that. So, start mixing. If you don't think you put enough food coloring, like it's a little too light, you can um, put more in. So, like, if we think that's a little too light, we can add some more. Like that. Do you think that's good? Okay. Okay. So now we are going to put it in a mixing bag. This one's a chicken one. Okay. Nope. <laughs> okay. So what you want to do is you want to... You want to make sure that you follow the instructions for these. And once you are done with them, you want to clean the tips out. Because if you do not, the The colors get, can be mixed. Yeah. The colors will mix. So, so we're, we're going to fold the top. Roll it up, okay, and then we'll spoon it in. And you're gonna take your spoon and try to get it all down like that. And you're gonna try to scoop all of it. And you're just gonna put it in the bag. And try to scrape it off if you can, so. You wanna use the most stuff. Like that. Okay. Assistant. Thank you. And then you're gonna like fold the top back up and twist it. You're gonna try to get all the frosting down. Like that. And you're gonna wanna twist it. Okay, and rubber band it. Okay, and see so you want to make sure that 
you want it to come at all to come down. Thank you. These are our cupcakes after they've baked. Okay, so we're just gonna take one. And take one, and we're gonna do a little hair like chipper. Don't squeeze too hard because the frosting will come out very fast. As you can see, Jocelyn is just doing little drops to make it look like hair, like this. Like that. And then for our decoration, we're gonna have we're having we have little candy eyeballs. They're edible. And we have and you can get those at Michael's. And then we're going to be making beaks to go with chipper. So we're using Mike and, Ike. Mike and Ike's. So you're just going to take your eye and just kind of put it wherever you want. For the beak, we we can either you can you either use um, the orange or the yellow. We you can just, really use whatever color you want. Yeah, we usually use the yellow. This is what your chipper should look like when you're done. So we're just going to keep doing this until assistant You're just going to keep doing this until you're done. Like I said, you can just use any color, so. If you did want to use like pink or red, go ahead. Just do whatever you want. So these are the some finished of chippers. So the next cupcake is a graduation cupcake. We are graduating from fifth grade this year. We're very sad about that though. But we're really excited that we're going to middle school. Okay, for this one you're gonna need green food coloring and another bowl. Well, we're gonna, there's two different kind of graduation ones we're doing. We're gonna do one that's all white with some green on it and one that's green, um, green, um, icing with white on it. <coughs> okay, so you're going to. So here's our first. The first one's going to be white. We're going to take the frosting and put it in the bowl. Oh. <laughs> Actually, you don't have to put it in the bowl. Because this one's our white one. So we're just going to put it straight into the bag. <laughs> kind of slipped out of the bag. So all you're going to do is you just roll it back. Roll, roll it back it in a little bit. Yeah. And then you're going to try to get some more if you don't think it's enough. Which and I don't think it is. And that's why you need to roll the bag up so it doesn't get all messy. That happens. Like that. Okay. Assistant. Assistant. <laughs> and so this one, we're going to. We are just going to go like in a circle and do it like this. It's okay if you mess up, but just try to fill in the holes as you go. And we're gonna be making thir a 13 on it. 
with Tootsie Rolls. Add Tootsie Rolls. And all we do is just stretch the Tootsie Rolls. That's how you get it in. You can either use Mike and Ice to make the 13 or Tootsie Rolls like we did. And we're going to be putting green sprinkles on the white. Along with the white, we'll be putting, no, that's for the green one. Um, we're going to be putting the little toppers. There are, these are for the green ones. We have a little top that says way to go. And the hat. So we're gonna take, we're just gonna take a few of these out. We're gonna take two of each. And for the Tootsie Rolls, if you roll it too hard or make it too thin, it might not come out how you want it, so you want to make sure you roll it just right. So, right now, I'm rolling out the 13 out of the Tootsie Roll, and I prefer the 13 to be the bigger, but you can make it smaller or bigger as you want. If your like, frosting isn't like coming out, it's probably because it's all up top, so what you're gonna wanna do is take it and just push it all down. And so, the 13, I've got my three done. Okay, and then you just wanna put it on there. So this is our first one. Looks like this, okay. And then for your green sprinkles, all you just wanna do is take your sprinkle thing and just kinda go like that until you think it's enough. So for your Tootsie Roll, all you wanna do is just roll it out until you think it's good enough. And the Tootsie Roll first, it won't roll unless you pull it out, so you gotta make sure that you pull it before and you don't want to pull too hard because then it'll snap like, like that. that. And you can't put it back together. So. It might take a little while, but try to get it as warm, like with your hands as possible. Then it'd be easier to get it to roll out. Or if you have like something hard like this, you can use it. So. And so, and so our next cupcake is going to be, it's going to have green icing. Can we have Annabelle take this? Just this. And so, we're just gonna use a normal one again, and we're gonna we're just gonna take a few scoops, and we're, we're gonna use a green dye. Okay, and. Now, if you don't mix it good, the colors kind of, there'll still be some white, so you want to make sure that you mix it all good. And right now, I think this is too light of a green. So what you're going to want to do is just add just more. Add a little more.
So at least do like one drop and then mix it in if you, and then see what it's like. Thank you. And then if you don't think it's still good enough, just add just a tad bit more. You don't want to add too much. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to have our bag. Okay, so if you're doing a new bag, you're gonna take your tip, whatever tip you want, like we have several, and then in your bag, you wanna put one of these, and then there should be a little screw like this. You can put on it. So you're just gonna stick it on like that, take your screw, and just put it on. Like that. Okay, so we're gonna put the frosting in. Like that. Like that. Push it all down and then twist it. And if and you want to make sure that there's no air bubbles in it, because that will mess up your eye when you're frosting. So we're just gonna take a cupcake. There's a little air bubble. Just go around like we did with the last one. Just go until you get into the center. And for these ones, we just did the little toppers. Pictures on the toothpicks. So for this one, we're going to use the way to go. We're just going to put it on. So there's our second graduation one. And you're just gonna keep going until. You're gonna keep on going until you get all the cupcakes done. And now we're gonna take one of the graduation hats. So just like all the other ones, just go into a circle. And if you see some holes, you can go ahead and fill them. So like I see a hole right there. There. Now we're gonna take another way to go and put it in. Now I'm making the last 13 for them. So then we'll be done with the first graduation one. Again, once like if you don't have any If you don't have any icing coming out, just put it down like that. Okay, and here's the last thing. We're just gonna put another graduation hat on, and then we're done. Okay, and when you're cleaning, for the um, tips, you wanna make sure that they're dried out because if you use them when they're wet, they will, um, 
it'll make the icing watery. So you don't want that to happen. Okay. So we're gonna. We need and when we Jayla? finish up the cupcakes, this is what they look like. And this is what the 13, the first graduation one looks like made out of Mike and Ike's. Thank you for watching us. We'd like to say thank you to our assistants, Annabelle and, and Jayla. Jayla. Thank you. Thank you for watching. watching. Bye. It was so good, we wanted to see it again. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that was Baking with Best Friends uh, from 2013. Um, one of the first things we shot in the studio within the, the year or whatever, or at least one of the first cooking shows we ever did. Nice, so those kids are what, Long graduated on. from college? Yes. Might be what? married? <laughs> oh, well, at least graduated from high school for sure. Um, and moving on, it's kind of crazy. So, and that, you know, here at the Owen TV Food Drive, 12th Annual, Joe Johnson with uh, Ian Locke here in the studio. Uh, great interview with uh, Matt Pfeiffer. A lot happened in that first Ooh. half hour, or in our first hour of our live segment here. Uh, Joe's joining us to, uh, today in the studio just to, to, to uh, help me out and uh, it, get us through uh, until 2 p.m. on our live segment. Uh, but yes, this is the Food Drive and uh, we, Technology right here at Owen TV helps it's get incredible. the food drive on the air. And just before uh, we went on live, three main elements died <laughs> <laughs> technology wise. And we were able to salvage the interview with uh, Supervisor Curtis from Oxford out in our lobby with one little application that we had flown around and a cell phone. So we really got lucky with that. So. With that, we started thinking of all the different things uh, that we could do with it <laughs> while we were watching Baking with Best, best Friends. And we're gonna, Joe's going to be our mobile guy. With this. With this little thing. And we're going to send him out to the truck so you can see if we have any donations, right? So this is the food drive. We are collecting physical donations here at the studio at 1349 Joslin Road at the Orion Center. And uh, donations have been coming in steady, and uh, we, I think we've yeah. had five bags dropped off so far today. We're off to a strong which start. Is, yeah, I'm really excited. So, um, your thoughts on the hybrid? Uh, this is our second hybrid food drive. Any? any I I like it. I think it's fun. It's it's uh, all week long. You're going to be seeing programs from our archives, and just that alone was a lot of fun going through our archives and pulling things out and. Um, we have the live element with the, uh, the, the marathon element, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. I look forward to it. Yeah, it's, it's a different flavor. Usually we ha do it in six hours on a Saturday. Okay. Uh, but I, I enjoy this part of it, going live at different times where people can tune in or don't tune, you know, can't tune in or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we have a good time. So, um, but it's for a good cause. And uh, we are celebrating Oxford Orient Fish and the food drive and what they do in our community. And our collection goals uh, haven't changed over the last couple of years. We're, our goal is uh, technically $5,000, but I real with what happened just not too long ago in our lobby with a $1,000 donation, yeah. which equates to over 3,000 pounds of food uh, purchased, um, we are on our way to shattering our goal. Update, so let's yeah, let's, let's do a collection update. If, I don't know if you hear our director on the speaker there, we can do a collection update. Uh, that thousand dollars, and where are we at now? Thirty-nine <laughs> seventy-five. This on is day the first one. day, right? <laughs> first day, and we are thrilled uh, for that outcome so far. And that has to do with our sponsors, local businesses, and generous donations. Now there are some anonymous donations that can't come in. We had one last Friday where we're prepping for the food drive. He, uh, somebody walked in and said, "Hey, uh, what can we do for you?" And he says, "Here's a hundred dollars for the food drive." And yeah. we're like. Great. Uh, what's your name? He goes, doesn't matter. 
That's and awesome. he rolled on. And so the community, like you said, Lake Orion is so generous uh, mm -hmm. from residents and the businesses and the government agencies all working together to do what they do to support those in need like the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. And uh, talking about those donations, we saw where we're at. Uh, yeah. I would like to thank, or we should thank, some of our sponsors. You think so? Yeah, yeah. So, um, one, we want to uh, welcome in Canterbury Village as one of our sponsors, the $1,000 donation from Canterbury Village. I'm so excited about that. We haven't had uh, Canterbury Village on board in recent years, and thanks to our friend Matt Pfeiffer, yep. uh, he talked to Keith Aldrich over there. And, and, Got us uh, together. Um, Keith is just feeling really philanthropic over there. Is that the <laughs> word right? Philanthropic? <laughs> Philanthropic. What do they say? <laughs> it's the emphasis on the syllable? Yeah. I think. Um, but we're so happy and so grateful to Canterbury Village for coming on board. That, uh, I'm just really happy about that. They're, they're doing great things over there. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, and the activities and uh, community festivals. Fe festivals. And, yeah, you and name it. For the variety is insane. And, yeah. And so we did do we did get an interview with uh, the with guys Keith. at Canterbury Village yeah, with yeah. Keith and uh, Joe was out and about uh, grabbing that that information. So here's a little video as a thank you from our sponsors for today's uh, edition of the Food Drive. All of us at Owen TV would like to thank our corporate sponsors for their generous donations. Today's portion of the 2022 Owen TV Food Drive is brought to you by. Canterbury Village, located at 2359 Joslin Court in Orion Township. They're a first-time sponsor to the food drive and donated $1,000. You can find more information about Canterbury Village by visiting their website, canterburyvillage.com, or give them a call at 248-931-1900. Meyer of Auburn Hills, located at 800 Brown Road in Auburn Hills. They are a returning sponsor for the food drive, donating $900 toward our goal. For more information about Meyer, give them a call at 248-393-5100 or visit Meyer.com. M3 Investments, located at 99011 Main Street in Royal Oak. They are a longtime sponsor for the food drive. This year they donated $500 to the drive. For more information about M3 Investments, you can give them a call at 248-543-3400. Aldi, located at 475 Brown Road in Lake Orion. This is the second year Aldi has participated in the food drive, donating $100 to fish. For more information on Aldi, you can check out their website. Waste Management, with locations in Lake Orion and Pontiac. This is Waste Management's first year helping with the food drive and have donated $200 toward our goal. For more information about Waste Management, visit their website, wm.com. And Shirley's Wig Shop, an online shop that can be found at shirleyswigshop.com. They're a first time participant in the food drive and are a two day sponsor. For more information about Shirley's Wig Shop, visit their website or give them a call at 586 237-7977. We want to share a video with you about Old World Canterbury Village making their food drive debut this year. Their generous $1,000 donation to fish will truly make a difference. the history. My father bought uh, the property in 1991. Uh, it took him about two years to restore the property and, and open it up basically as a Christmas village and a giant Christmas store which was the anchor of the business um, for a long long time. Uh, fast forward to 2020. I bought the property for my mom and dad, me and my wife Angie and in the last 15 months we've kind of had the quite the whirlwind of change uh, with Canterbury. We are no longer in the retail business, meaning the Christmas. Uh, I've leased out every square foot of this place to great uh, local vendors, Yates, Wooden Tulip, Scott's Farm, you name it. We have some really, really great small vendors here. And then uh, we've, we've gotten known for our family events uh, that we, uh, we do with our programming. 
uh, dinosaurs, Halloween, holiday, food truck rallies, things of that nature. And our calendar for 2022 is by far our biggest ever, and it's going to be a crazy summer here. Uh, just go to our Facebook site. I mean, we got everything on there. Uh, our, our social media team does a great job of keeping people up to speed on what Canterbury is doing. So just go to Facebook, Canterbury Village, and then obviously you can go to CanterburyVillage.com on the web, but that'll take you to Facebook as well. I own Dino Stroll, um, and uh, we, we've been around the country. Last June was our first uh, uh, first road show in Philadelphia, and so we've been at it for about seven months now. And last weekend we were in St. Louis. This weekend we're in Chantilly, and uh, been all over the country. And it's been a whirlwind. So I never thought I'd be in the uh, dinosaur carnival business, but I am. And uh, I've had a lot of fun and me and my wife have had a great uh, 15 months and our charity and giving has been awesome and we're, we're very lucky and very happy. Well, we have three big charities right now. Uh, Jay Towers with Jay Juniors in 15 months, we raised over a little over $70,000 for his uh, charity, which is helping sick kids. He takes them to Disneyland every year. And then uh, <clears throat> we've teamed up with Metro Detroit Chevy dealers and the bottomless toy chest. Uh, we've raised in the last two Christmases thousands and thousands of toys. Uh, this year we decided to go a little above and beyond and we donated $5,000 to uh, the bottomless toy chest. They do a wonderful job with kid pediatrics uh, for 12 months of the year. And then uh, this year, uh, this summer, this past summer, we opened up our own food pantry on our campus along with Woodside Bible Church. We call it the food, Village Food Pantry. And uh, it's been a whirlwind. It's been very fun. Uh, I'm super uh, proud of the, the, the charity aspects we've given. And uh, in the next few weeks, we're going to uh, announce our fourth charity partner. And then obviously, um, Matt Pfeiffer gave me a nice phone call uh, about a week or so, so ago. Um, I, I can't tip my cap to Matt enough what he does for our community. And if we had another 25, 30 Matt Pfeiffers in, in Lake Orion, it would be awesome. And uh, he asked me, or Canterbury Village, for a nice donation for the uh, <clears throat> Your Food Drive going on. And of course, I'm always willing to uh, donate and help out. And, uh, you know, just because I have my own food pantry doesn't need other ones don't need help as well. So Canterbury donated $1,000 to... Uh, to the food drive and, and your, um, your uh, program in the next couple of weeks there. But if everybody pitched in, that's well to do, like you just said, in our community, and, and a lot of people have, you know, hopefully Oxford Orion Fish, uh, Village Food Pantry, hopefully we can help uh, bring that to attention and really stop a hunger in our own little community of Oxford and Orion, and hopefully continue it, you know, through Oakland County and then Metro Detroit. And you know what, we live in America, nobody should go hungry. I mean, our number one goal in America, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, no matter what you believe in, nobody should be hungry. And thank you once again to uh, Canterbury Village and their $1,000 donation to fish. Again, uh, the biggest donation we've ever had, a yeah. uh, singular donation we've ever had uh, to the food drive. And we thank them. And again, we can't reach their, our goal without their support and others uh, uh, in our community, the business community, uh, including Waste Management, who's one of our uh, sponsors for today. And uh, we didn't get a chance to get out to meet the, the crew at Waste Management to get a video like we did with um, Meyer and, uh, and Canterbury mm -hmm. Village, like we just did. So I have a little statement, uh, and we have a little graphic we can pop up for waste management as a thank you. But here's a little statement from waste management. Waste management is North America's leading provider of integrated environmental solutions. We partner with our customers and communities to manage and reduce waste from collection to disposal while recovering valuable resources and creating clean, renewable energy. We are on a quest for environmental performance a mission to maximize resource value while minimizing and even eliminating environmental impact so that both our economy and our environment can thrive. Uh, Waste Management, a two-day sponsor here at the Food Drive with their donation of $200. And we can't thank them enough um, for being a first-time sponsor with uh, 
with the food drive and supporting fish. They support a lot of community events. Uh, whenever we're at one of the parks and uh, recreation events, waste management's always a major yep. sponsor. When I go to the Arts Center and cover uh, the exhibits and shows that they have at the Arts Center, waste management is a sponsor. They do a really great job of supporting the community. Absolutely. And uh, the other spon uh, sp sponsors <laughs> for today, excuse me, I'm, I'm a little the clipped, as they say, because <laughs> of their absolute, it's unbelievable how they've come out this year. It's, it's really, really incredible. And um, we usually have a little graphic popping up on the screen, if you're just tuning in, that has kind of our current totals of what we've collected so far. And I'm really, really excited. I'm not going <laughs> to say, but I'm really encouraged, I'll say, by the numbers that we've uh, collected so far and the donations we received that we're going to hopefully smash through that goal for fish, which would be humongous. It uh, definitely is going to raise the bar this year, I think. <laughs> Give us a new goal ongoing from I, now on. And, and we've done that. So uh, it, I think the first year of the food drive was in 09 or 2010 or whatever. I think it's 2010. Yeah. And our goal was to raise like fill up a van, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and um, it was, you know, uh, small. You know, we didn't know what to expect. And then it's grown into this, uh, this big community event that people mark on their calendars now. And it is uh, something that, you know, fish, they promote and we promote and we work with schools, we work businesses, nonprofits, churches, all these different groups to help collect on their behalf. And it's just really turned into this really awesome event, I guess you'd say. Uh, it's not just a telethon or a TV show, and, but yeah. it's a big event. And yeah. yeah, prior to COVID, our focus was food. Yes. This place would just be buzz, buzzing like a beehive with people dropping food off and getting into our raffles yep. and things like that. Um, but because of COVID, we had to kind of shift our, our focus a little bit. And, and now we focus on mostly the cash donations, even though we do still encourage you to bring food in and fill the van. Oh, absolutely. Um, but yeah, with uh, the focus on, on cash, which allows them to buy fresh produce and, and meat. Uh, they said they're having a really hard time getting chicken. Um, oh, yeah, so I, I, th I think that's uh, an issue everywhere <laughs> across the country oh. with with these uh, you know logistical issues and uh, you know that sort of thing so it imagine how you go to the we go to the grocery store we're not in a food emergency and we're still finding some items that staples that we buy all the time that are missing yeah so imagine a food pantry who is doing the exact same thing to help those who don't have those resources yeah. we can go other places if we have to you know, bite the bullet a little bit and pay a little extra for something or a replacement. But there's a lot of people that don't have those opportunities. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's very it's key uh, to donate to uh, the food pantry, keep those uh, shelves stocked. And the unique thing about fish is, if you're if you're not aware, is that it's 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 not like a, a donation situation where you walk in and here's a box of food. You go in with your family and you go grocery shopping. Basically, so yeah. the food pantry is like a grocery store. And yep, that's how it's set up. Who knows better what your family needs than you? And so they go in and grab the items that they need um, off the shelf and they, they take what they need and, and that's it. You know, so it's, uh, it really works out well for all involved. Uh, community can donate. People can get some sustenance, and if they're in an emergency, they can get some assistance. So, and you'll see in a video in a little bit later. But prior, again, prior to COVID, there were some uh, criteria you had to meet as a family if you wanted to use their services. But when COVID hit, they eliminated all that red tape, all that yeah. paperwork. Anybody in need can come in now. The last two years, they relied heavily on uh, curbside pickup. Yes, where families would uh, they kind of phone ahead, roll up with their vehicle and uh, load their vehicle in the parking lot. They're now getting back to the shopping mm -hmm. mode like you were talking about, yeah. but they've had to adapt these past couple yeah. of years. As, as we have all, okay, so if you are in a food emergency, we do have a graphic for you uh, and a phone number to call, 248-628-3933. Um, it gets the process started. And like you said, I didn't realize that the, re you know, all the process to be registered with them and talk to the people at Fish to get on on their uh, donation list uh, has been streamlined, yeah. as we say. So uh, get going now. If you're hungry, 
um, you need something, 248-628-3933, uh, and you can also visit their website at oxfordorientfish.org. More information there of how, um, if you want to volunteer, if, you know, if you're not in a food emergency but you want to help out, you can always do so. Head on their website, call that number, tell them you want to volunteer or assist in any way to help uh, that uh, that great facility and organization uh, runs smoothly. One say. thing they do offer, which I think could be a lot of fun, is the Adopt a Shelf program oh, yeah. that they have. Um, the VFW has done it. As a matter of fact, I think they're going to be presenting a check later this week. Um, but you can adopt a shelf at Fish and keep it stocked, whether yep. it's pasta or peanut butter or whatever you choose. You can help keep a shelf stocked throughout the entire year. So an organization, a family, an individual can sponsor a portion of a shelf and stock it with their uh, food that they are donating. Like yeah. So that, that's how it works? Very good. Okay, so here's the, uh, the need list for donations this time of year. It changes throughout the seasons, and as we're in the cold winter months, as you know, we like some hearty stuff. Right, so uh, just like everybody else, you want something that's, uh, that'll fill you up and it's uh, good, especially uh, th those hearty meals like uh, canned uh, uh, st uh, beef stew, hamburger helpers, those meal prep items, uh, chilies and canned meats, uh, but also canned pineapple and mandarin oranges, oranges and other fruits because uh, uh, it's quite a dessert. It kind of, I, Canned pineapple reminds me of spring, kind of gets you through <laughs> those doldrums of the winter, right? So those are some items. Of course, they, they'll, they'll take uh, any item you would like to donate as long as it's not expired or opened. Yep. And uh, earlier in uh, our live studio segment, segment, we were talking to Matt Pfeiffer, and he mentioned that. And he's right. It, it, if you donate something that is expired, it's just more work for the volunteers, uh, here at ONTV, we sift through and discard the, the items that are expired and uh, just to, to streamline that, uh, get that food on the shelves quicker. So, um, yeah, donate food that you don't mind eating. You know, right. You know. Yeah, donate the stuff you like, not the, uh, the lima beans that, that have been sitting on the <laughs> back of your shelf for a year. Yeah, it's, you know, you're trying to help people out, you know, not, <laughs> not do spring cleaning, right? So other ways to donate, and, and this is where our little technology is going to come in and we're going to send Joe uh, out and about with his little his camera and do some uh, the mobile uplink studio on, on foot here, Mr. Johnson is. But if you want to donate, you can donate online by visiting orionontv.org. Click on the Food Drive logo and donate to the GoFundMe account, which we have running currently. And the GoFundMe will be up all week, and it closes down at the end of business on Friday night. Um, the other way is to come in person and help us fill the van. And uh, hopefully we get some live footage uh, from the van so you can see what it is, where it is outside. The big white van you see driving around town all the time, going to football games, basketball games, and doing different productions around town. You can drop off uh, your uh, physical food donations at 1349 Joslin Road at the Orient Center and help us fill the big old white van. ONTV logo is all over it, as you can see. And go ahead, drop your donations off. If you don't want to fill the van up or you want to actually bring it into the building, because it is kind of cold out there. We were worried about some donations freezing and <laughs> popping, you know, right? So uh, you can bring it in the studio. We're here until 9 p.m. tonight. So you can drop your stuff off and donate as you see fit. You can also drop off cash. So we, as you know, there's always a fee when you donate to GoFundMe. So a portion of you know, the processing fees, uh, though we're in the GoFundMe charity realm, so the fees are quite minimal. Minimal. They've been reduced, but there is still a fee there. So if you want to really get that cash donation 100% to fish, uh, you can do it in person. And we just had that today. $1,000 donated by two very generous businesses in yeah. our community. So you want to send out fantastic. Okay, we're going to we're gonna fire up Joe <laughs> and send him out. Let's see what happens outside. here. Uh, it's a little chilly outside, so he's our mobile guy. Oops. And uh, like we said, we had uh, our handheld camera kind of arced out on us before we went live. So we're like, what are we going to do? And um, it happens every time. You know, uh, Jim and Steve have, are on our cameras. They've run cameras for us for many food drives over the years. And there's Joe. He's, mo he's mobile. Oh, how's the screen? Is it going to hold? It looks like it's holding. There's our big snow piles, and uh, you can see our, our food totals down in the lower right-hand corner. That is an active uh, an update there, 3,975 so far. And Joe's going to take out, take a look at the van right now. We've got our safety cones there. 
just for good measure. Oh, I think I see a bag. Oh, we got a bag uh, and a box of food donated so far. But see, that van is empty. We want to fill that baby up. And we're going to need your help to do it. Yep, there he is. Yeah, we sent him out with his coat. I'm going to hear about it later. <laughs> But yeah, it's live television here, right here at the Orient Center at the studios at ON TV. Live TV is always fun. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, we were setting up all last week, even during the uh, the snowstorm, where uh, you know we had snow days and we were kind of shut down for a little bit and school is out. Uh, we were here putting uh, the, the food drive together, making sure everything was working. My staff was at home rendering um, remotely from home and doing all these uh, this sure. extra work. Try to bring the food drive to you and support fish. And so far, so good. And once we hook up all the gear, you're going, yes, it's working. And then it's not working. Okay, so we did get about, I think, five donations in our lobby so far. The bag's there. Nice donations dropped off today by generous residents who stopped in. And it's, it's really kind of a, a nice feeling when they come in there. And everybody who donates donates, they're always smiling, right? Because they know they're helping those in need. And we're always so grateful for their assistance. And the big pile in the back, the big cases of corn and green beans, we want to thank Gowling Buick GMC uh, and Bill Kokanis for those donations. Uh, the staff over there at uh, Gowling Buick GMC. Uh, every year we've had this food drive has been a sponsor and uh, a huge help uh, over the years. They used to give free oil changes as a raffle prize, and those those are surprisingly very popular. <laughs> Everybody likes to get uh, those free oil changes, but um, you want me to head in? But there, yeah, so we're doing well. Or do you want to see the control? Three thousand nine hundred and seventy-five dollars. <laughs> Is he uh, Joe still wandering? There's a studio. There's Joey and Becky. Uh, uh, behind the scenes, they're uh, pushing all the buttons and trying to make me look good, which is quite the challenge <laughs> and uh, on any day. <laughs> but my staff is, is awesome. I, uh, we get along so great and we work together so well. I, I, we couldn't do these sorts of things without the staff we have, have at ONTV. And we've been together so long. I, actually, I think uh, Joey's the, the baby of the crew. He's only been here, what, five, six years? I, I'm, I'm losing track of how long people have been here. We've been a crew together for so long and uh, working on these projects. And Mr. Mobile's back in the studio. Al Frank in here. <laughs> it wasn't too cold out there, was it? <laughs> Little bit. Let's see, what time do we have? It is 1.26. We are on camera two, thanks, Steve. And uh, we are hopefully going to have an interview with the president of FISH coming up momentarily via Zoom. We should have it, we're just setting it up. Okay, they're just setting it up. So um, th that's another thing with um, helping out charities and volunteerism and all these different things is the technology that we've stumbled across uh, due to the pandemic, Joe. Um, you know, this little app we just loaded on the phone that we never would have known about um, saved our bacon today, technologically <laughs> speaking. But then, you know, getting people involved, our volunteers here and other volunteers together to continue on the charity work that they do with their respective organizations from churches and a variety of things. We have Zoom and we have GoTo, all these applications, just out of I'm nowhere. I'm always blown away by the technology and, and I always brag about the staff's ability here at ONTV to adapt and adjust and to incorporate this technology into yeah. what we do. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, we had to. <laughs> you know, uh, when we were locked down, and I'm sure many of you at home, when you were in the lockdown situation in your homes, uh, what, a year and a half ago, or whenever it was, uh, 2020, March, April, right? Two yeah. years ago. It was rough and we had these technologies, for us at least, to communicate and see each other's face again. It was kind of cathartic. <laughs> We're here, you know, I'm in my basement, a dingy basement, looking at my staff members going, how are you doing guys, you know? <laughs> and it worked out well. It's a link to the outside it, world. It really was. And so luckily enough, we are um, able to have, Joey, how are we? Okay, we're just adjusting the image a little bit. So it's still a work in progress, but we're utilizing this technology and the other charities, and I'm sure FISH is the same way. Uh, you have, they have a board of directors. They have a president. They have people who work together to do uh, the work that FISH needs to be done, even in a pandemic. And everybody, from businesses to nonprofits, adapting to the situation. Think about the restaurants like, and fish who offered curbside service, yep. where that's kind of the standard now. That's kind of expected. Right, yeah, it's not going away. 
Hey. So uh, we are proud to uh, welcome into the studio the president. Is Michelle there? The president of a fish. Michelle, <laughs> are you there? Can you hear us? Do we hear you? Uh oh. She can't, can't hear us. Hear. I uh, check the wireless. It needs to be up on the uh, audio interface knob. Yeah. Which? Okay, PC audio up. I am microphone B. So at the top, we need audio interface <laughs> uh, engineering from the studio here. Just as we were bragging about the technology. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear us. Can we hear her? Yeah, I can. She cannot hear us. We're working on it. Are we there? There we go. There, we there go. she hey. is. Live it's television. Michelle. Hello. Hi. Thank you. Yeah. Ian Locke here, uh, here in the OnTV studios, live uh, Monday the 7th, first day of our food drive. Tell us about FISH. Tell us uh, all the new things happening at your organization. Right now, we're extremely busy given the food prices and, you know, the economy. And it, this is such a benefit, this, this telethon more so than any other year, just given the food prices. And we weren't able to have some of the other food drives that we've had in the past due to COVID. So you doing this is such a blessing. And really, we'll hear from people two, three months down the road that you know they saw this on, on TV. So this is really the telethon that continues to give throughout the year. So I can't thank you enough. We were, uh, I, I think when Joe came out uh, to visit with you and we put some updated videos together about the organization and see how you guys are doing, checking up on you. And he mentioned that, that uh, this isn't a one day or a five day thing, that it kind of lingers because we do advertise, as you know. Um, we put it everywhere we possibly can. They're in magazines and everybody's homes and the Lake Orion Living magazine and all that sort of thing. So it's good to hear that feedback that, you know, uh, there's still some ripples going on um, after the fact. So today we're actually doing very well. We just had two $500 donations uh, this morning. So that's another wow. $1,000 for the organization. And our goal, of course, is 5,000. I think we're just going to destroy that number. <laughs> <laughs> the corporate sponsors this year have been just outrageous. Can you uh, share with us uh, any other organizations that you work with that you would like to uh, uh, shine a light on? Um, definitely Love Inc. They do a lot and I think sometimes they don't get the credit and I know that sometimes they feel a little left out that sometimes maybe our organization gets a little bit more than they do. So they're something that our clients are also when they're clients of fish they can also be a client of Love Inc. and Love Inc. will help you know any, any, tour, any sort of other issues that they might need if it's you know with housing and whatnot. And the other partner that we've really been doing a lot with has been St. Vincent de Paul because there's been a you know big issue right now is housing and everything is kind of coming apart all at once. And they are really able to help with you know some of needs if there's you know utility bills. It's so the it's the cost right now to heat their their um, their homes and for fuel. There's just the needs are just endless. And right now we're hearing that I'll have clients that will call that will just be like you know single moms. They were working. They didn't make enough in tips so that there, there's immediate food. And that's something that I will say hasn't happened in a while, but I'm getting a lot of those phone calls. I get those emails that I need food right now. Yeah. And, you know, because nobody wants to ask for help. So that's something that I think it's been such a benefit with the food drive and the generosity of this community that, as you know, Joe saw, our, our pantry is stocked and we are able to meet those needs immediately. And it's really been because of the generosity of this community. I, I can't thank them enough all through COVID, but donations just kept coming. It, you know, it was just unbelievable. I would just sit here and hear it. Okay. Yeah, when we talked about a week or so ago, you, you really gave a lot of credit to Gleaners for helping you get through the past year oh. or so, right? Yes. And that's really, and I mean, Meyer is a wonderful partner. We can't thank them enough. But they could, you know, if you walked into Meyer, there was no food on the shelves. Yeah. And if it wasn't for glean, if it wasn't for gleaners, we would not have been able to meet the needs of this community. And those, and through gleaners, that's where, like this, the food pantry, we will be, be able to get our money because of this food drive. That all the food drive money, you know, we do have to pay for gleaners. It's definitely a better price, but we do have to pay for that. And those are the dollars from this telethon is what we're able to purchase with gleaners and that's how we're able to definitely meet the needs because even now 
there's food shortages that we we can't get certain items in for our clients now you mentioned too um or we were talking just before you came on the air about uh you know this streamlined process if you if you're in a food emergency what do people need to do uh you said we can help and, you now so explain that and that's something that you know years ago there was um they would have to sit down with a client review bring in a lot of paperwork a lot of documents and it was a little cumbersome and that's something thank you so much for highlighting that because really right now just given the entire situation, we do, um, it's very brief on the phone. It's a real simple client review. We just need, you know, basic information, you know, the amount of the children, you know, are in the household. And if they actually, as long as they can prove that they live in our area, you know, Oxford, Lake Orion, Leonard, certain parts of Oakland, because we have, you know, our parameters that we don't want to, you know, infringe on another pantry. But really, as long as they're in the area and they have a need, they just need to call. And we will get them in as soon as we possibly can. And we have the number up on the screen, 248-628-3933. Yes. And of course, your website, OxfordOrientFish.org. And your needs always change, right? We, it's, it's something that people really don't understand. It's like seasonally different things uh, the, people are looking for or needing. And one of the, the items that I think could get overlooked is school supplies. Uh, you guys collect school supplies and you know there's blessings in a backpack which we know about but uh, you also take school supplies and what was the other items uh, household items yeah, yeah. toiletries things shampoo, like that shampoo toothpaste you know the yeah. regular stuff that um, if and, and that's yeah. that's something from the food drive that those are dollars that we will use to purchase you know because we have to have you know toilet paper they need paper towel they need cleaning products they need you know shampoo toothpaste soap razors so we really do try to kind of meet all of those needs that so it's basically you know like a little grocery store if you walked into meyer it's really the same thing so that's what we really try to because then even a lot of them have bridge cards but with a bridge card you can't buy toilet paper you can't buy feminine products yeah. so it's basic needs that you know you don't necessarily think about that they have to have and they're so ex everything is just so expensive right now well, you guys do a fantastic job there at FISH and uh, the partnership between FISH and ONTV in its 12th year, and it's not going any way anytime <laughs> soon, <laughs> but it's, no. it's, uh, it's a great partnership, and uh, your support of us and our support of you and the mission that you guys have is, is one that uh, the whole staff and the whole organization from our board of directors to our cable commission um, who make sure that we operate. We're all on board with your mission and, and this food drive. So uh, we thank no, you, you for your... Such, yeah, go ahead. You, yeah, you are such a gift, really, because we are 100% donations, 100% volunteers, and we really, truly try to meet the needs of the community, and we can't do it without the community support. And you giving us this opportunity this week for this... Um, this telethon is just, like I told you, it's, I can't thank you enough because it's literally a gift that will just continue throughout the entire year. And there's, we don't have anything else like it. Well, we like to be unique. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, um, and we appreciate uh, you allowing us to help you. Um, it's, it's, it's great. And um, again, live with us here, the president of Fish Michelle, and uh, we want to thank you so much for taking time to uh, Zooming in. And I'm glad oh, the technology worked. <laughs> we were, we've had a lot of little hiccups today. <laughs> but thank oh, you so I, much for taking the time. Oh, and any uh, uh, last uh, little thank yous you'd like to give before we go? Honestly, it, was just, it would just be a thank you to you, your organization, to Tracy, to Joe. Like, I can't thank you all enough. And really to all of, all of the, you know, the community, the, the generosity. It's, I can't say it enough, and I know I sound like a broken record, but it, it's just absolutely amazing. This is such a unique community and that everybody just sim seems to come together. And that's why I always refer to the pantry as my second home. And every person that comes in there is a guest in my home. And we want everybody to be treated that way. And we're able to do that because of you. So thank you. You are more than welcome and are you know, it makes me smile. Thank you so much. Uh, we have some no, food here you need you. to come get yeah. at some point. <laughs> we, we're getting some actual physical donations today, which is great to see. Almost back to normal, Wonderful. like we said. So, but yes, oh. um, we want to thank uh, you for taking the time to uh, zoom in. 
And oh. uh, we'll be in touch, and by the end of the week, um, we will be sharing some very good news with you and the organization. Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful day. You too. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. And again, fish, what they do, right, in our community. Just yeah. very active, um, helping those in need. I mean, what else can you say? It's, a, you know, on one hand, you wish there wasn't a need for it. Yes. Uh, we live in a county that's widely regarded as one of the wealthiest in the nation. And it's so shocking to think that there are people here in Oakland County who go hungry. Yeah. Um, but because of the generosity of this community, um, we're able to put food in their, their cupboards and on the table. So, um, so yeah, I wish we didn't have uh, to have this need, but... People really come through and, and uh, spread the wealth. Absolutely. Um, okay, we are, uh, what time were you? About uh, 1.40. So we, uh, all this, uh, all Monday on the 7th, our uh, special programming today is cooking. And we've already had uh, one of our se special segments today. And we're going to the next one. Are we doing eclairs or are we doing uh, venison do marinade? Okay, venison marinade. Joey, our director, this is his <laughs> recipe for his favorite venison marinade. Take a look at this. Welcome to the ONTV Cooking Show. I'm Joey Tysick, a production coordinator here at ONTV. And today I'm gonna to show you how I make my venison marinade. I like to make things super simple. Um, I like the aspect of cooking, but I don't have a ton of time on my hands, so I try to just speed things up as quickly as I can. So I got some venison here today, and then I got a, a truckload of ingredients here. I got just your normal salt, a little bit of olive oil, some red wine vinegar, a red wine. Now, normally you'd want to use a dry. Uh, the only thing I had was sweet, so we're just going to go with that. And it should turn out just fine. It's just for a little bit of acidity between the vinegar and the wine. Um, we've got your black pepper, some minced garlic, a little bit of rosemary, and some soy sauce. I like to use the less sodium soy sauce. I'm a little sensitive to salt myself, so typically I just don't like the taste as much, so that's just my preference, but you can use regular soy sauce if you want. Uh, it's all up to preference. Um, and then of course we got our venison here. I chose a chop today, which is a really good, or a tenderloin, really good piece of meat uh, from the deer. Uh, the one thing that you want to make sure that you look at is you look for any silver skin left over. Now most of the time once you go to a butcher, you're not going to have to worry about it, but I did see there's a little bit right here on this piece and you just want to take that off. It's usually a connective tissue that, you know, you don't want to have on your meat. So I'm just going to cut just a little bit of it off. You want to be careful not to cut too much into the meat itself. Um, so once you have a little grasp of it, I'm just going to cut that off and that'll just make sure that the meat's nice and tender. You can throw that away. No worries there. So. To get this started, like I said, it's super simple. So we're gonna take our ingredients and we're gonna start with the red wine. And we, the best way to do this is to pour it into this Ziploc bag. I like to take the gallon bags. And most of the time you can measure this out. I'm more of an eyeball kind of guy. Um, so this asks for a cup, uh, a quarter cup of red wine. So we're just gonna pour a little bit in there into the bag. That should be about good. So there's that. Then we're gonna grab the garlic and it asks for about two cloves of garlic. Grab myself a spoon here. And normally, like because this is just one, this is kind of serving, you could probably serve two people with one tenderloin or if you're super hungry like I am, I have two for some that I've pre-prepped that we're gonna cook later. So I'm gonna put just about two scoops of this garlic into the bag. We're gonna put our garlic back. And then it asks for two tablespoons of soy sauce. Again, I don't like soy sauce a ton, 
So I usually go a little bit lighter than some people. That should be about good. Usually just one little pour is enough. Um, and then we need the red wine vinegar. Um, this is for our acidity. And the acidity and the olive oil from these ingredients, that's gonna really break down some of the connected tissue in the meat. And once you let it marinate overnight or a few hours, it's gonna really break down those tissues and it's gonna allow your meat to be really tender. And that's exactly what everybody likes. Um, I think the one thing that a lot of people say about their venison is that it tastes very gamey and it just, I don't know, I guess a lot of people think it's not as fancy, but I tend to differ and I feel like you can do a lot of different things with venison. And it's one of my favorites because it's so lean. There's not a lot of fat to venison, but it does make it a little bit trickier to cook. So you gotta be a little bit careful on that side because it can dry out really easily. Um, and you can kind of not ruin the meat, but it just makes it a lot tougher, a lot quicker. Um, so that's one reason also that I won't be putting salt in this marinade per se, because I don't want the meat to dry out while it's cooking. So we'll salt it after we cook. So now that we got all these ingredients in here, we're just gonna take the bag, we're kind of gonna swirl it around, make sure it mixes up a little bit, just nice and easy, nothing crazy. And just make sure it gets mixed up a little bit. And then once we have got that done, oh, I gotta add olive oil. One last little bit. And this is a half cup, so this is a little bit more because typically what you wanna do is you wanna have about one third part um, acid and then two thirds, so to speak, of olive oil. So we're just gonna give that a nice mix again. Let those sit in there. And then we're gonna add a little bit of the pepper. And the pepper is gonna be about a teaspoon or so. Normally you'd, you'd also wanna use a more coarse pepper because it tends to get more flavors into there. We're just gonna go with the pure ground black pepper. Not really a big difference, but just the little things. Just gonna give it a little shake in there. Should be good. And then we're gonna add some rosemary just to it kind of goes along with the earthy textures of venison. Of course, it goes into that gamey talk that people have. There's my beeper for the oven. That's perfect timing. So we're gonna throw the rosemary in here. I don't have much left in this bottle, so I'm just gonna dump it all in there and give it another good mix. And then we're gonna take our meat and we're just gonna throw it in there. Gonna make sure it's nice and covered and we're gonna seal it in the bag. Make sure to get all the air out that you can. Seal it up nice and tight. And then I give it another good couple shakes here and there to get the everything mixed up nice and easy and let it sit. And then there you go, you have your marinade ready to go. Super simple. So we're gonna put this in the fridge and it's gonna sit in the fridge for about mm, eight to 12 hours. It's kind of up to preference. You can do it shorter. Um, but I like the longer that it sits, the more the marinade is going to really sink into that venison and it's really going to get all those juices and flavors into the meat. So we're going to throw this in the fridge right now. We're going to leave it in there. And then I have my pre-prepped venison. And as you'll see, it's a little bit, well, I'll take it out put it in the glass container here that we're gonna cook in. And as you can tell on this venison, everything's all nice and coated. It is a little bit slimy, but that's because it's, I've been trying to get it to room temperature. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it over to the sink here. And what I'm gonna do just really briefly is I'm gonna make sure that I get all that marinade off the edge. You don't want it to be too thick so that the meat will sink in so we're just going to kind of roughly brush it off and get as much off as we can set it in our bowl same thing with the other piece kind of shake it off get some of that marinade and that garlic just off the edges just so it cooks a little bit quicker a little bit nicer and more even because everything should already be nice and soaked into the venison and then we're going to get rid of our marinade we don't really want to use that really again And then I've been preheating my oven to 450 degrees. 
and then we're just gonna throw it in there and uh, it should be good to go. One other thing that I will mention is that you can do this on the grill as well and the grill is gonna make it just a little bit nicer because you can kind of char those edges a little bit. So a nice um, grilling would be nice, but because it's, you know, middle of winter, there's not much grilling going on. But that's what it should look like. Tried to rub off as much that I could um, on, the, on the meat and we're just gonna throw it right in the oven. And now that's gonna be in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. We'll have to kind of see and wait and we're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's kind of a nice medium rare to a medium. Cause again, you can dry out venison really easily. So you just gotta be a little bit careful by that. So just try to look at it every few minutes or so. And uh, we'll see you back in about 15 to 20 minutes. ON TV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and non-linear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ON TV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. And we're back with my venison marinade. It's been just about 20 minutes. I had to, at 15 minutes, I like to check it. Um, I put my knife in there and there's still a little bit of red juice coming up. So let it sit for another five minutes. Um, and I think it turned out perfectly. So then once you pull it out of the oven, you want to let it sit for about five minutes. Let those juices really soak in after it's cooked. And then we have this lovely venison that's marinated, ready to go. And the last little thing we got to do, put a little bit of salt just kind of however much you want. I, like I said, I'm sensitive, so I just put a little bit just for a little bit of that extra taste, a little bit of pepper. I did it backwards than what I said, but hey, you get the point. There's the salt. There we go. I'm gonna put a little bit more pepper actually. And there it is. The other thing you can do is if you have um, some fresh rosemary, you can kind of fancy it up and you know make it look a little nicer as a presentation you can put some fresh rosemary off to the side or even on top again if you wanted to um, this is a great dish that can go with just about anything you can uh, cook up some rice just do some instant rice maybe in the microwave that takes like a minute or some noodles some of those pasta size that you can get um, so the the nice thing about this meal is although you have to wait for the marinade which is like I said about 8 to 12 hours once you've done that you literally just pull it out of the fridge, throw it in the oven, 20 minutes while that's cooking in the oven, you can cook up some rice, cook up some sides, maybe throw some vegetables in the um, microwave or something or roast them up. And all of a sudden you have this meal that took, I mean, 15, 20 minutes, like I said, and you can impress some people because it looks fancier than it really is. And it's a nice quick dish. But now I need to take a bite of this because I've been smelling it the whole time. So we will see you guys on the next one. All right, back in the studio, just wrapping up this uh, 12 to 2 live segment uh, here with Joe Johnson in the studio. I'm Ian Locke, Executive Director at ONTV, wrapping up the Monday live segment here. Uh, let's take a look at uh, more programming that we have coming this week. Uh, all today, again, is all our cooking shows, uh, so a special 
uh, seven to nine uh, features of all the ONTV staff doing their favorite uh, recipes. And some um, from the archives, which Some is from fun. the archives, yeah. Which some is archives go way, way back, right? Way, way back, <laughs> like 96. But anyway, <laughs> so Monday we have food and recipes uh, from the ONTV staff. Tuesday is our sports day where the uh, Sammy Taramina from OAA now and between Taraminas will be in with me and Joey uh, Tysick will be in for From the Sidelines, that podcast, and we're going to be debating and talking sports. Um, and you'll, you'll see special highlights in, uh, of our most favorite and exciting games from 2021 and into 22. And Wednesday, we have music performances where um, we'll have some live music in the studio where I will... <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> just can't laugh. Uh, I'll be playing for the first time ever in public my guitar with George Sinnott, who's basically a professional, our longtime uh, volunteer here at ONTV and a member of our board of directors. We have some amazing yeah. talent walk through these doors. <laughs> it uh, really and, blows me away. I am not one of those guys. So uh, <laughs> Thursday is do-it-yourself day where we're going to have all the DIY shows that you can handle, uh, uh, especially in the prime time hour from 7 to 9. Uh, where you can learn how to publish your own book and make some crazy ice sculptures, which is a lot of fun. So Friday we wrap up uh, the food drive with Orient History, which I'm really excited to see because uh, ON TV over the years has been covering, and you, Joe, are, mm -hmm. I mean, you were here in the 90s, mid-90s um, yeah. at the station recording the history of the mid-90s, and we're releasing it every once in a while, and now we can really talk about it. Uh, to the community and we're going to have a guest in. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson will be joining me. No relation uh, <laughs> that I know of. We may be related. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about Orion history. Um, just recently they, they uh, opened the brand new Township Hall Municipal yeah. Complex. We'll talk a little bit about the history of Town Hall in, yep. in Lake Orion and, and some other fun things. And it's topical because of that new building. It's yeah. a big step forward saying goodbye to an old building and and the, the really fabulous building that they just opened up down the road from us. Uh, also, before we get out of here, we'd like to thank all of our sponsors for today once again. Wait a minute. Oh, oh here just comes Tracy. An anonymous donor for fish. $100. Wow. $100. Holy fish moly. Fish food drive, $100. Live TV. So we just wanted to point that out. We're not exactly wow. sure who the person is, but we want to just let you know that the donations are keep coming in and we love your support. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks, so Tracy, for that update. Awesome. Uh, again, anonymous donor dropped off $100 for fish. Thank you so much. That uh, that can go to so many things as we heard Michelle, from the president of Fish, talk about early in our interview in the studio. Uh, she joined us on Zoom. So thank you so much. We'd like to, again, let's, uh, if we can say thank you to our sponsors, we would love to do that. Uh, Aldi, uh, $100 sponsor, one day sponsor at 475 Brown Road in Lake Orion. Who else we have? Canterbury Village, of course, $1,000 donation. They are just down the road at 2359 Joslin Court in Orion Township. For more information, visit canterburyvillage.com or 248-391-1900. Oh, 931, excuse me. 1900. <laughs> M3 Investments, longtime supporter of the food drive. Uh, Michael Kane and the crew there donated $500. 990 North Main Street in Royal Oak, 248 543 And Meyer, another longtime sponsor, a $900 donation wow. here today. Uh, 800 Brown Road in Auburn Hills, uh, 48326. And give them a call, 248 393 5100. Shirley's Wig Shop. New we love sponsor, Shirley's right? Wig Shop. Brand new, yeah. Visit Shirley'sWigShop.com. It's an online store. Or give them a call at 586-237-7977. I believe, do we have a video with them? Nope, nope. Nope, no video. But it's always great to have a new uh, sponsor on board. Waste Management at 600 West Silverbell Road in Lake Orion. Two four, was it 245 East Walton Boulevard in Pontiac. Um, a two-day sponsor here of the donation of $200. First time with a food drive. Mm. So Thanks that's for your generosity. Absolutely. Awesome. And uh, how are we doing on time, Joey? Just a couple minutes. Okay, a couple minutes. Uh, okay, so a couple minutes we're going to send you off to more cooking shows, um, some of our favorites and the fun ones we've had. Um, hope you had a good time uh, uh, tuning in to this noon to two uh, live slot here in the UNTV studio. Joe, thank you for... So for dragging you in here to, <laughs> <laughs> to sit fun. with me to do this, you know, it's just something different. Get away from the desk and uh, support the good cause. So different ways you can donate, head on over to our website at orientontv.org. Click on the Food Drive logo and donate through GoFundMe. 
or you can donate in person right here at the studios at 1349 Joslin Road at the Orient Center. Bring non-perishable food items uh, to fill our production van or any monetary donation as Tracy just brought in, $100 to fish from a, an anonymous donor just now. So, right, well, let's um, wrap it up. So we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow at noon to 2, sports, live here in the studio. A nice little debate about a bunch of things. So we're Super gonna Bowl is right around Super the Bowl, corner. Yep. And or the big game. Should and, be or the big game. We can't <laughs> sit. Don't want to get sued. Okay, we're going to see you guys. We're going to send you off. We'll see you. Uh, tune in tonight, 7 to 9, uh, for more uh, special programming. Here's an update as we go out of our collections, and we'll see you tomorrow.